There are so many Tesla semis being produced by the end of the year that Elon has also confirmed a crazy announcement about this electric truck to prove that this is going to be the best Class 8 truck on the planet. During this time, Tesla has added a much-needed feature to the big rig that no other truck on the market has. The latest customers of the semi have also announced its incredibly impressive performance after only a short time of operation. If everything goes according to plan, there will be at least 1,000 semis by the end of this year before the new Tesla semi factory is completed by the end of next year. And here are the latest updates on semi trucks. All right, everybody, welcome to another installment of Tesla Car World, and thanks for being with us. Earlier this year, we reported that Tesla was behind schedule in semi-production, having only built about 140 units so far. About 100 of these were being used by Tesla themselves, and only 36 got delivered, leading many to believe that this semi would soon get discontinued due to the immense effort required from Tesla. However, it has not been abandoned as we thought. On the contrary, as the year progresses, Tesla's been ramping up and focusing more on the semi. It seems the manufacturer's goal is to fulfill orders for companies that have been waiting far too long without much feedback. Since early October, the number of Tesla semis has increased at an astonishing rate, and if Tesla picks up even more speed by the end of the year, we think that at some point next year, keeping count of them will no longer matter because there's just going to be too many. Specifically, in early October, videos captured by Henrik Zane, a drone operator in Nevada, showed a total of 38 brand new semis freshly produced. Just a few days later, an additional 53 semis were spotted outside the Nevada factory. So far, all semis have been produced from a small production line at Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada. However, the company is currently building a dedicated facility nearby that will focus solely on semi production. The facility is expected to get finished by the end of next year, and only after its completion will Tesla be able to reach its annual production target of 50,000 semis, as announced by Elon. Meanwhile, while waiting for the new factory, a significant number of semis are getting produced at the current facility. Around November 18th, Henrik Zane continued to report that he spotted at least 60 Tesla semis on both sides of the building. As a keen observer of Giga Nevada over time, he estimated that the total number of semis produced by Tesla had hit around 250 units. As the number of semis continues to rise, Elon made a pretty bold announcement about the electric truck. Specifically, Tesla's CEO confirmed that the semi is going to get sold worldwide, allowing semi to make a significant impact on emissions in the transport sector across global markets. Oh my goodness! Before this, we simply thought that Tesla would just make more semis for the European market, especially since Elon had showcased it at Giga Berlin over the last few months. So we believe that the semi will soon make its way to Asia and Giga Shanghai is fully capable of making these electric trucks. Of course, we can confidently say that the versions outside North America are going to have some differences. For example, in Europe, the regulations regarding truck sizes are very different from those in the US, and road space is also smaller. So the first factor Tesla needs to adjust is the truck size if they want to operate the semi on roads in this continent. The European version of the semi could also include a different front suspension setup, allowing Tesla to enhance its regenerative braking capabilities and adding a framework behind the cabin that would allow for a sleeping area, meaning that the cabin will be slightly bigger than the North American semi. However, this won't significantly impact the already impressive performance of this semi. It can still provide a range of 500 miles with a total payload of around 75,000 pounds, and in a non-loaded state, it could even exceed 600 miles. The uniqueness of the Tesla Summit is further demonstrated when it climbs hills, and customers will find this hard to overlook. Just look at the power of the semi. It can ascend a 10% grade at 60 miles an hour even when fully loaded. No other heavy-duty truck in the world can do this when carrying a full load. For example, current heavy-duty trucks, when fully loaded, often can only do 30 on the highway because they just can't go higher speeds. This makes drivers feel unsafe. In fact, drivers who've tested semi in the US say they don't want to go back to driving other trucks. They prefer the semi because it's just easier to drive and a lot smoother. Another benefit of the semi is its regenerative braking. Tesla claims it can recover a lot of energy when going downhill. Now, you might be skeptical about the impressive capabilities of the semi, but there's new evidence regarding the efficiency of its 900 kilowatt battery pack and the unbelievable performance of the big rig. Recently, DHL, one of the bigger freight companies in the world, which is actively looking for ways to reduce emissions, shared the results of a two-week trial with a Class 8 truck. 
the company noted that the semi significantly exceeded initial expectations. On its website, DHL posted initial results from its two-week testing phase with a semi, during which they drove the Class 8 electric truck for over 3,000 miles in Livermore, California on regular operation routes. Part of the testing included a 390-mile trip with the semi-trucks fully loaded with a total weight of 75,000 pounds. DHL has confirmed that the electric truck's ability to haul DHL's typical loads over long distances can be done on just one charge. Now, as far as we know, the semi-long-range variant has a base weight of 23,000 pounds. So in this case, it was carrying at least 52,000 pounds of payload, including the cargo. The max weight allowed for electric trucks is 82,000 pounds. But we don't think there's going to be many cases where that's the max, so 75,000 pounds is still pretty impressive. Not just that, DHL says that for more than half the time, the crew drove the semi, it averaged just 1.7 kilowatt hours a mile while traveling at speeds above 50 miles an hour. As the company notes, this far exceeds DHL's expectations as well as Tesla's own ratings for the semi. On its website, Tesla states that the semi can achieve a driving efficiency of under 2 kilowatt hours of energy consumption per mile with a total range of 3 to 500 miles when fully loaded. Now, as we understand it, Tesla is working on adding an insane feature to its electric truck, which is especially important after the incident where a drowsy driver caused a semi to catch on fire, and that is FSD. Throughout this time, the semi has been continuously testing this feature as it was spotted undergoing trials and adjustments for fully autonomous driving with LiDAR equipment mounted on the roof. Now, you might be skeptical about this since Elon said he'd never use LiDAR, but in reality, LiDAR is used to facilitate and validate the camera system during training computations. It's not needed on the finished product. Simply put, LiDAR is just a support tool for the self-driving tests of all of Tesla's EVs. In our view, Full self-driving is going to make Tesla Semi a steal of the century. Pepsi not only bought 86 electric semis from Tesla, but these trucks have effectively replaced their diesel ones, helping them save on fuel and maintenance costs. Elon referred to it as a money-saving machine. In the near future, Pepsi will just need to update the software over the air, and suddenly you'll have over 100 self-driving electric semis, saving an additional $60,000 to $70,000 a year for each truck since they won't need drivers anymore. They might only require an Optimus robot to load and unload the cargo. Ultimately, with FSD, the semi could truly be a different type of long-haul truck, one that's safer and more affordable to operate than any other Class A truck on the road today. Incorporating FSD is necessary, we think, because truck drivers are often sleep-deprived on multi-day routes. Returning to DHL's assessment of the semi, DHL drivers are said to have adapted quickly to the vehicle's intelligent features with noticeable improvements in performance, driver comfort, and overall efficiency. Maximizing range and efficiency is crucial to proving that long-haul electric vehicles can perform equivalent work to diesel, writes Graham Carroll, DHL's head of business development for their semi-trucks. We're excited to see DHL confirm the benefits of the semi's advanced technology and driver-centric features in live commercial operations. Following the trial, DHL says it's now evaluating how to integrate the semis into its fleets when Tesla begins volume production of the semis at an upcoming Gigafactory facility in Nevada in 2025. DHL confirmed it ordered 10 semis in 2017, and that number is likely to go up based on the test run. Looking at the increasing number of new semis at Giga Nevada, we believe that it won't be long before Tesla fulfills orders for all companies that have placed them. While Tesla hasn't given any specific details about the trucks spotted outside the facility, there is speculation that some of the trucks in the video may be allocated for PepsiCo. The snack and beverage giant ordered 100 semis back in 2017. According to comments from PepsiCo's electrification program director, Dijan Antunovic, at the IAA Transport Expo in 2024 in Hanover, Germany last month, Tesla has delivered a total of 86 semis to the company so far. 15, which are operating out of the Modesto warehouse, 21 from Sacramento's warehouse, and 50 from the Fresno warehouse. Considering that 60 semis have been spotted in a recent video by the drone operator, it's possible that half of this quantity will be delivered to Pepsi. This would help the food company quickly complete its entire order for all electric Class 8 trucks. Such a scenario would be a significant milestone for the Tesla Semi program, as it would allow the electric vehicle manufacturer to start fulfilling orders for other customers as well. We'd be surprised if PepsiCo hadn't gotten all 100 of its trucks yet, and we think that the next semis will be delivered to new customers like Walmart or FedEx by year's end. All of these customers are pretty big companies similar to Pepsi. Right now, we're looking at a series of frame rails, and I believe these are frame components for more Tesla semis, 
Based on Tesla's increasing focus on in-house production, it's likely that they'll make these frame rails themselves. Currently, as far as we know, the semi is still using the 2170 battery, but it is possible that Tesla has developed several prototypes of the semi that operate with a 4680 battery pack. With Tesla working on the new 4680 battery that offers more energy density, it's conceivable that in the future, the semi could have a range of up to 600, even 700 miles, debunking arguments about limiting the range of electric trucks. Tesla's semi is the only electric truck that can address the most challenging issue related to long-haul freight transport, as the range of most battery-powered tractors is insufficient to meet fleet operators' demands. Additionally, recharging the massive batteries required to provide these tractors with the range they need takes much longer than refueling a diesel. However, it's important to note that it only takes 40 minutes to fully charge the semi, allowing drivers to recharge during unloading or while taking their mandatory rest breaks. Last month, while showcasing the Semi in Europe, the head of engineering for Semi, Dan Priestley, revealed several incredible specifications about the vehicle. Specifically, the fleet's driven over 4.6 million miles, equivalent to 7.5 million kilometers, since the Tesla Semi testing fleet began operations. Among them, Priestley highlighted one Semi truck that's traveled over 248,000 miles or 400,000 kilometers at maximum load in just 18 months, demonstrating the reliability of this big rig. According to Tesla Semi's director, the fleet's uptime is 95%, meaning the Semi is operational with no significant issues or maintenance problems. The main challenge related to deploying electric fleets is charging and range, but Tesla seems to have a solution. Priestley announced the development of Tesla's megawatt charging stations for heavy-duty diesel trucks, which are expected to provide charging times comparable to refueling diesel, adding that the average energy consumption of Tesla trucks is 100 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, making it more efficient than diesel trucks by 2024 and slightly better than the other electric trucks out there right now. Dan Priestley also acknowledged that things will only improve when Tesla returns to mass production of the semi. Higher efficiency means lower battery volume and costs, resulting in a more affordable product with better benefits for customers. Although the semi was initially designed with a North American market in mind, company CEO Elon Musk recently stated that he wanted to become a global vehicle. But offering the semi outside the US is still a ways off, as the manufacturer hasn't even started large-scale local production just yet. Elon's declaration of the semi's global reach doesn't mean it's going to happen soon. It first needs to prove itself at home in the U.S. Tesla needs to begin production of the semi at the newly dedicated facility in Nevada and start delivering these trucks to customers, not only to demonstrate that there is a demand, but also to show that there's a practical use case for it. Introducing the semi to more markets is now more feasible, as continents are gradually easing regulations on electric trucks. For example, last year, Australian government announced it would increase the maximum width of trucks by 50 millimeters to 2.55 meters, provided the vehicles are equipped with advanced safety systems. Before, Elon viewed the truck width regulations in Australia as a barrier when he wanted to enter the local market. Priestley also noted that the semi was designed from the outset to be a versatile vehicle for the global market. A prototype that meets EU size requirements and is compatible with European trailer couplings already exists. This shorter variant, which lacks the long fenders, offers a range of 300 miles. It may be less than competitors in Europe, such as the Eactro 600, but in terms of other metrics like energy consumption, there's going to be no competition that can rival Tesla. Tesla's considered building the semi at Gigafactory Berlin in Germany, but we believe this may require expanding the factory, and we shouldn't expect these trucks to roll off the production line in Germany before 2026. When Musk refers to the semi as a global vehicle, he may be alluding to China, where several key provinces have committed to bringing bus and truck emissions to zero by the end of the decade. This indicates that the demand for electric tractors will likely increase, and Tesla might also consider manufacturing the semi in China to meet local demands and requirements, while also making it locally to cut costs. Elon has confirmed that the Tesla Semi will be sold worldwide, which will create a shift in the trucking industry and also reduce emissions, noise, and pollution. Heavy-duty trucks only account for 1% of vehicles on the road, but they make 20% of emissions. Reducing the number of diesel trucks and replacing them with electric will have a huge impact. Keep in mind that the Tesla Semi's got an impressive range of up to 500 miles and can charge quickly at 1 megawatt, provided you have the right charging infrastructure. 
It seems that Elon and his engineer still have a lot of work to do to make the semi an attractive vehicle for Europe. It'll also take some time to fully refine the FSD capabilities, as we assume that enabling a heavy-duty truck to drive itself will need to navigate numerous national traffic regulations, as well as the efforts of the Tesla Semi team. However, we know that Tesla tends to accelerate rapidly in terms of technology, so it wouldn't be surprising to see a few semis on the road without drivers by the end of the year. Do you think that the Tesla Semi has the potential to become a global vehicle? If the Tesla Semi becomes driverless by 2026, how do you think this will change the transportation industry? Thanks for watching our video. If you found the content helpful and want to explore more exciting information about Tesla EVs, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video. Also, make sure you're subscribed to our channel and turn on those notifications so you never miss our latest videos. We appreciate your support and hope to see you back here soon. Take care, stay safe, and God bless. Bye.